Before starting, I just want to make a few corrections in the previous video. So first one is, uh, when motivating Leon's lemma, I wrote the following, u in L2 of omega, du by dxi in L2 of omega, 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n, implies u in w 1 p of omega. Now, you would have figured out that this is not what I meant. I went u is in h 1 of omega. So, that is the first correction. Second correction is when we define this in proving cons inequality, we define the space E which is set of all v in L 2 of omega power 3 such that epsilon i j of v is in L 2 of omega for all 1 less than or equal to ij less than or equal to 3. And here I define norm of v in E square. So, the correct expression is this is equal to integral on omega sigma i equals 1 to 3 mod v i square dx plus integral on omega sigma i j equal to 1 to 3 mod epsilon i j v square dx. Okay. So, in what I wrote last time the sigma i j equals 1 to 3 was missing. So, that has to be added. So, these are the uh, minor corrections uh, which I made uh, or wish to make. Okay. Now, we are going to start an important topic. This is called trace theory. So, I have been always saying that the Sobolev spaces form the natural functional analytic framework in which we look for solutions of partial differential equations. So, when sol solving partial differential equations, we are often encountering boundary value problems. So, omega will be a bounded domain and in the domain, the solution u will satisfy some differential equation. And on the boundary, it will satisfy some conditions like u equal to 0 or du by d nu equal to 0. This is the outer normal derivative on the boundary. Okay. So, we wish to make uh, give a meaning to these expressions. This need not be 0, it could be other functions also. Okay. So, when uh, if you for instance, if you are uh, if i equals 0 1 and if u is in h 1 of i for instance or w 1 p of i, then this implies that u belongs to c of uh, i bar. Therefore, u0, u1 well defined. And if you are in higher Sobolev order Sobolev spaces like Hm, then u will be in space of continuously differentiable or more functions. So, successive derivatives of u at the boundary points are also well defined. Now, if you are in uh, higher dimensions, say n greater or equal to 2, then if you, you do not always have this, you, in order to have this continuity inclusion, inclusion in space of continuous or differentiable functions, you need to go to very high order Sobolev spaces, m bigger than n by p as you know, and if you are in h1, etc., it may not always be true. So, what do we mean by u on the boundary? Now, if you take a function u in L2 of omega and w h1 functions or w1 p functions are all in L p and therefore, these are on only defined almost everywhere and the measure of the boundary is 0 and therefore, it does not make sense to talk of the value of u or the value of derivatives of u on the boundary. But we want to make use of the fact that we know something more about the derivatives of the function, namely they are also in LP spaces and using that we wish to uh, make a, give a meaning to what is meant by u restricted to the boundary or du by d nu restricted to the boundary and so on. And these are called traces of the function on the boundary and that is why we call this trace theory. In what follows I will do everything for p equals 2. But one can easily change it to any other p if you like, but it is more convenient for me. Therefore, I will, it is enough to do this. Okay. So, theorem. And I will do it for the uh, domain Rn plus and then you know the transition from that to any other omega of class Ck or C1 and so on 
is using the coordinate charts, the mappings from Q to the neighborhoods on the boundary, which we have used many other many times, and therefore uh, we will wave our hands about that. But we will try to do in as much detail as possible uh, uh, the theory for Rn plus because that is where the key thing lies, and everything else can thereafter be easily done from that. Okay, so there exists a continuous linear map. gamma naught from h1 of rn plus to l2 of rn minus 1. So, recall you have that rn, so this is rn minus 1 and this is xn and this is rn plus and then and this is the boundary of rn plus, so d of rn plus is Rn minus 1. Okay, so, we uh, have a functional mapping from H1 of Rn plus to the boundary okay, such that if u belongs to H1 of Rn plus, intersection C of Rn plus closure, so it is a continuous function on the closure of Rn plus, then gamma naught of u is nothing but u restricted to rn minus 1. Okay, so, this is the first uh, trace theorem which we want to see. Okay, so, now let us try to give a proof of this fact. Okay, so, as usual we start with v let v belong to d of rn and we are going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus every time. So, mod v x dash 0 square. So, recall x is equal to x 1 x n in R n, then we write x equals x dash x n and x dash equals x 1 to x n minus 1 in R n minus 1. Okay. So, we are taking the restriction of v on the rn minus 1. So, v of x dash 0 this is equal to minus integral 0 to infinity d by dxn mod v x dash xn square dxn. So, we are just taking mod v x dash xn square the differentiating with respect xn and then integrating with respect xn which means you are just going to get the difference of the end values at infinity because we are in d of rn it will be 0 and at the lower end point it is be xn equal to 0. So, we get v of x dash 0 and that is why we have picked up a minus sign in the process. So, this is equal to if you expand this this will be minus 2 integral 0 to infinity v of x dash x n into d by d x n of v of x dash x n d x n. 2 a b is less than equal to a square plus b squared. So, this is less than equal to 0 to you know, mod v x dash x n square plus mod d v by d x n x dash x n square dx. So, now if you integrate with respect to x dash, so on the left hand side you will get integral rn minus 1 of v of x dash 0 square dx dash is less than or equal to here you are going to integrate with respect x dash you already have an integral with respect to x n. So, you will get integral over r n plus because you are integrating in x n only from 0 to infinity of integral mod v square plus mod d v by d x n square d x. So, in other words we have mod v restricted to rn minus 1, 0 uh, rn minus 1, the L2 norm 
in Rs minus 1 is less than or equal to norm V in 1 Rn plus. So, V going to V of x dash 0 gives you a continuous linear map of drn restricted to rn plus with norm 1 rn plus into L2 of rn minus 1 and therefore extends but you know the d rn restrict to rn plus is dense in h1 of rn plus one of the earliest theorems we proved in for any p in fact and therefore in particular for p equals 2 and therefore extends uniquely to a continuous linear map which we call gamma naught from H1 of Rn plus into L2 of Rn minus 1. Okay, so now we have to show, so now let V belong to H1 of Rn plus intersection continuous in Rn plus closure. So we want to show <coughs> that gamma naught of V is nothing but the restriction. So now extend V to Rn by reflection. Then V belongs to H1 of Rn. This is we this we know because the reflection is a prolongation operator, and it's also because it's continuous on Rn plus, and you are just reflecting it. This also in C of Rn. Okay, so we have all these things. Now you choose epsilon m decreasing to 0, rho m equals rho of epsilon m mollifier and then zeta in d of r n support of zeta in b 0 2 and zeta identically 1 on b 0 1 0 less than or equal to zeta less than or equal to 1 and we put zeta m of x is zeta of x by m and therefore support of zeta m equals b 0 to m and zeta m is identically 1 on b 0 m. So, all these we know before and what do you know one of the first uh, results which we have seen is that rho, rho m star v x converges to v of x point wise because you have a continuous function convolving with the kind of mollifier it just gives you converges to v of x we have seen this when studying convolution of functions okay and also we have that v m converges to v in h1 of r n and we have that zeta m v m sorry rho m star v Rho m star v converges to v in h1 of r n as well and zeta m v m equals zeta m times rho m star v also converges to v in h1 of r n plus. 
All this we have seen in the very first theorem where we proved that uh, d of Rn is uh, d of Rn is dense in H1 of Rn, uh, W1P of Rn. So the same things we are doing here, and therefore you have Vm converges to V in H1 of Rn plus S1. And that implies that gamma naught Vm converges to gamma naught V in L2 of Rn minus 1. But what is zeta m uh, rho m star V which is Vm also converges to V point wise because zeta m is uh, identically 1 on b0 m. So, you have bigger and bigger and so eventually every point will come under some big ball of radius m and consequently you will have that this becomes stationary point wise and consequently you will have that it also converges to 0 point wise. And um, but what is vm restricted to rm minus 1? Rn minus 1 is nothing but gamma naught of uh, Vm. Okay, because that is how we, we prove we extended the gamma naught was defined by this because Vm belongs to D of Rn. And therefore, gamma naught Vm will converge. converge And we know that Vm converges to Rn minus 1, converges to V restrict to Rn minus 1. No, sorry. But because you know that it converges in L2, gamma naught of Vm for some subsequence must converge point wise to gamma naught of V, and therefore we have that uh, gamma naught of V is nothing but so this implies that gamma naught of v is v restricted to rn minus 1 okay so that is uh, uh, okay this converges to v is restricted to rn minus 1 point wise and since it also converges in l2 therefore you have that these two are equal so that proves this theorem okay